good morning and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and I tell you what, it's a big morning for Manchester United fans and it's not a nice one, is it? Another disappointing result for Manchester United and a multi-layered issue within this football club that I think we all need to acknowledge here. And I, for one, think there's quite a lot to, to delve into because, look, honestly... I can't sit here uh, as somebody who wouldn't sack the manager and disagree with people that want to sack the manager. I also think that there are so many areas that are contradictory yet again. And I also think that the one thing that's staring everybody in the face, we don't talk about enough. And that is Ineos. Because I can sit here and say... We've got to clear out these players. For the first time in 10 years, we've actually got to have the balls to clear out the players. I can say that. You can say the tactics are terrible, Mark. He's got to go. We're conceding so many shots. It's not just the players. It's the manager as well. You can say that. And you can get the typical boring, repetitive nonsense, which I want to talk about as well. The critics who... I don't think add anything. You can basically go back two years and they're saying the same thing. Three years ago, five years ago. It's the same thing. I don't think they even understand what they're saying. I don't really respect what they've got to say because they're part of a Ten Hag out movement that doesn't have any layers to it. So look, I think there is so much to get into this morning. But I think the trick we're missing more than anything is I feel very down this morning. Um, not as bad as the Fulham home loss, but it's not far off because we shouldn't have got a draw. We definitely shouldn't have won and we certainly should have lost. So I suppose in one way, it's not the result we should have got because uh, we should have lost the game. We deserve to lose it. It's um, There's no doubt about that. But I think for all the moaning and the fraud and all this, that and the other, like I do like to read. I do like to take in a lot. Some people do content they're so shoved up their own ass. They don't really listen or comment or, or do research. They just want to throw their opinion at you, whether it's good or bad. I do take in a lot of things because it's therapy for me. You know, otherwise, if I live with my own thoughts, it's depressing uh, on what I think about yesterday. And I read good bits. I read bad bits. But the, the one thing that comes out from me this morning is... It matters not whether you're Ten Hag in, and we'll do a poll on that. It matters not whether you'd sell Rashford and Bruno. It matters not whether you think we should be playing better football or we can't play any better than this. There is only one set of people who have the answers, and that is to Jim Radcliffe and Ineos. And I don't know what they know, and you don't know what they know. And they they need to get to the answer, and they need to get to it quickly. Because I think Manchester United at the moment, off the field, are reflective of what they are on the field. We've had all the honeymoon of, oh, it's great, the things that they're doing. But they've been here for three months. Still no director of football. Still no real definitive you know, vision of what we're going to do. I just see PR talk. Well, we're going to dictate the way that we play. Are you? And what are we going to play? Because I tell you what, I think your, I think your vision has got more holes in it the moment, at the moment than a sieve. Because if you are literally going to sit there and say you want to stay, you want to play this style of football, then when are you going to start implementing it? Because a lot of people will say about Manchester United and Ten Hag, well, the football's not good enough, Mark. It's not good enough. But I can't control that. You can't control that. Ineos can control that. And they better find out why we're playing like this. Is it on the manager? Is it on the players? And whatever that result is, they need to work off that. Because I see a lot of people out there saying, whoa, Zidane in, like uh, Club says, or De Zerbi in, or Southgate in. And I'm like, do you actually watch football? And do you understand football? Because I feel that when I read certain journalists who just don't have a clue about football, let's be honest, they don't. They've been to college. They've got their blue tick. They've got a job at a newspaper making the coffee and they've got promoted all the way through and they've learnt football in a fucking classroom. They haven't learnt it following Manchester United and if they have, they have spent most of the time writing into their laptop. They haven't got a clue about football. I, I can't even be asked to read their player ratings or anything like that because they haven't got a bloody clue. They don't know what they're talking about. And when I see people go and get the bold fraud out and this, that and the other, well, you know, again, I, I don't respect your opinion because you're using abuse. 
to project to frustration. And actually, you should be able to analyze and look at a situation and say, you're not on the training ground. You don't know why our fullbacks don't join the press. You don't know why our midfield's wide open. And you don't know why certain players aren't playing well because you're not on the training ground. And I don't know really either. And um, no journalist knows. Ineos will know. They're running the football club. But what I will say is, we played against the low block last night. We've not played well against the low block for six years. So it's not a surprise that we can't break a low block. When you look at that team last night, it's mainly Jose and Oli players. We are a counter-attacking team. We don't have players who can play possession-based football. And I've, I've been saying this, and you've been admitting it for a long time. We can't play against the low block because we don't have players who can retain the ball. Bruno Fernandes can't retain the ball. Scott McTominay doesn't want the ball. Marcus Rashford can't retain the ball. Ganacho had a bad game last night. Mainu is the only guy in that team, in that front six, who can retain the ball. It's not Rasmus's job to hold the ball up and, you know, possession-wise. His job's to be in the box. So we're up against the low block and people struggle with why we fail against the low block. So that's lesson number one. Number two is, if you think you like chips... And I give you a steak and you go, didn't like it. And I give you a chicken and you go, I didn't like it. And I give you pork and you go, I didn't like it. And I think, oh, maybe a vegetarian option. I give you a veggie burger. I didn't like it. Chips with salad. You didn't like it. Maybe it's not what I'm giving you with the chips. Maybe the chips is the problem. And the analogy there is, I just see people moaning every two years about the manager. The chips is meant to be the football club. Maybe you don't know what this football club is anymore. Maybe you think you love this football club, but you don't. Maybe you've so become so indoctrinated into negativity that you are always blaming the thing that goes with the chips instead of looking at the chips. And the chips represent the players and the state of this football club, which has been consistent for 10 years. Whether it's David Moyes, Van Gaal, Mourinho, Oli, Ranić, or Ten Hag, Six different ingredients to go with your chips. None of them work. And always it's the thing that goes with the chips that gets discarded. What are we going to try next? A bit of lasagna. Um, you know, maybe some fajitas. Like the bottom line is you keep changing the thing that goes with your chips. And your chips are the problem. And it's very, very clear. So if Ineos are going to sack this manager and they have every right to do it and they might be right to do it. I don't 100% know what's going on. And certainly in this show, I'm going to bring into things that I don't like. I'm certainly going to do that. I'm not sat here saying, let's stick with Ten Hag forever. I'm not saying that. It'd be ridiculous to say that. I've got massive concerns, especially after last night. But I also come back to where I was before Brentford, where I was before Liverpool, where I was at Christmas. We can't just keep changing the plate, but keep the chips on the plate. We can't do that. Like, we literally do this all the time. And it is so obvious to me that, well, here's the contradiction as well. Don't blame the chips. Exactly, Elon. But also, so many complaints from last night that I read were, yeah, the players are shit, but the manager's shit as well. Well, what is it? You know, literally, I know people are angry and frustrated, but what is it? So the players are shit, and I know the players are shit, but the manager's shit as well, and he needs to go. Really? Is that, is that what, do you, do you understand how contradictory that is? The players are absolutely shit and shouldn't be wearing the shirt, and they've been shit for years, some of them, but the manager's shit as well, so let's sack the manager. And I'm like, yeah, OK, that's an even bigger reason to actually leave the manager alone and go after the players on this one, because some of these players have survived three or four managers. So maybe like when Arteta, Arteta finished eighth, maybe we stick with the manager for the summer and have the clear out, which is so staringly obvious. I can't even speak. It's incredibly obvious. But look. I can't be bothered with a ten hog, ten hog, ten hog in, ten hog out argument. I haven't got the strength. I haven't got the desire. What I do know is I don't have all the answers. And anybody who's screaming and shouting that they do. I mean, look, another thing I would say as well, 
Um, and there's so much good opinion out there. Like, you know, I, I read people talking about the tactical setup of Manchester United. And yes, Raphael, the subs were awful. And I will come back to that. And I said it in the match reaction last night. I will come back to that. But 100%, I read, I consume, I accept, I acknowledge tactically it's a disaster. And it's not just last night. Fulham was a disaster. Liverpool should have killed us in the second half of the FA Cup win that everyone was happy about. Tactically, it's an absolute disaster. And, you know, you get people out there, respect, you know, you're not a manager, you don't manage, you sit on Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, and you tell everybody about tactics and you do your little videos, well done, you know, you've got your followers, United stand, I don't manage either, we've got our followers, we've got our viewers, so respect to that. I, I'm not going to slag it off. But what I would say is, you're not reinventing the wheel about Man United's tactics. When you when you say things like, we press as a six, but the back four sit back and we got played through by Brentford and they're on our back four, we can all see it. Stevie Wonder can see it. When you say our midfield is too exposed, we can all see it. And what what worries me is, there seems to be like there seems to be an obsession with things like um, let me just show you this because uh, we've got a good video coming up from Beth later, but I I'm going to nick this. People get obsessed with stuff like this, right? Oh my God, 31 shots, 31 shots against Brentford. It's absolutely disgusting. You know, th expected goals 3.1 to 0.5. Um, absolutely ridiculous. They had way more corners than is. Oh my God. Wow. Get rid of this manager. Okay. Yeah, you're partially right. But as I always say, where's your solution? Where's your solution? Because what terrifies me is that we focus on how many shots we concede, right? But we've conceded less goals than, than than teams who are above us in the league. I think we've conceded less than Spurs or, or, or somebody who's around us. So, but that's not my point. It's a bad point, that is, because I watched the game last night and it was luck that stopped us conceding four goals, not, not defence. But when... I, I expect better of Man United fans, basically. I expect match of the day or talk sport or Sky to, to, to you know, keep pumping up these... Uh, stats about how many goals we've, con uh, how many shots we've conceded, because ultimately it's just a stat. What I want is the solution, and I what I want is the reason. Okay, so be careful what you wish for, because if Ineos aren't clever, they will look at the moaning about the amount of shots we're conceding and go, well, if we bring Southgate in, he's quite defensive. It won't happen. And you bring someone like Southgate in, and suddenly you're playing shit football again. Like. I instantly can solve that problem. If that keeps you up at night and you're obsessed with the amount of shots we're conceding this season, let's get Jose back. We'll solve it overnight. And that's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of moaning. There's a lot of screaming. There's a lot of shouting. But it's just noise. And, and it's the same noise we've had for years. People moaning about what I actually think is the wrong thing. I don't think the amount of shots we're conceding is actually that relevant unless you've got unless you know the solution. Because I can solve that problem for you. Ineos can solve that problem for you. And it might be the worst problem they ever solve. Because they might look at if they're not intelligent, they might look at the amount of shots we're conceding and go, this ain't the right guy. Let's get Jose Mourinho in. Let's get uh, Gareth Southgate in. They they defend deep. They're compact. We won't concede many shots. And we'll become a counter-attacking team again. And then people will moan about how fucking boring we are. So, yeah, we're conceding way too many shots. But at, th at least with Ten Hag or a, you know, even a De Zerbi, you would still, you would be on the pathway to playing better football. There's no way that, that Ten Hag or a De Zerbi want to play the way that Mourinho or Southgate play. But the danger is there's such an obsession at the moment with the amount of shots we're conceding. There might be a desire from Ineos to go first things first. Let's just stop conceding all these shots. Let's shut it down at the back. Let's bring some stability in. Let's bring Southgate in. Let's bring Jose back. Let's put a manager who's going to stop all these shots. I don't want that. I've been there, seen that. It's absolute shit. The best form of defence is attack. If we could keep hold of the ball up the pitch, we wouldn't concede shots the other end. And I don't hear enough people talking about this. They're talking about how many shots we concede, but they're not talking about solutions. 
And it terrifies me that someone like Dan Ashworth or Barada or Sir Jim will go, we're conceding too many shots, you know. We need to get defensive. Let's bring a defensive coach in. That'll make everybody happy. It will make me cry. We are conceding too many shots, but the solution is not to go and let these players off again. Because the, the style of football these players want to play, by the way, is defensive counter-attacking football. Someone like Bruno Fernandes, Scott McTominay, Marcus Rashford, Harry Maguire, Victor Lindelof, Aaron Wambasaka, they're heaven made for deep counter-attacking football. Edge of the box defending, compact, break with a lovely Hollywood ball over the top for Rashford to run onto. This team would be brilliantly managed by Thomas Frank. Thomas Frank would suit this team better than any hipster coach you want to go with. Zidane, Klopp, whoever you want, Thomas Frank is the dream manager for this squad. And that's 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 real talk. You know, if you want real conversation, you want real hipster conversation, you want real definition on what Man United's problem is, it's staring you in the face. I can't solve it. You can't solve it. We can scream. We can shout. We can let it all out. We can be Ten Hag in. We can be Ten Hag out. But Ineos know what's going on at Manchester United. They are the people who need to make decisions quickly. And they are the people who need the pressure on them. Players can't sell themselves. Managers can't sack themselves. Managers can't back themselves. Ineos need to figure this out and figure it out very quickly. They've taken on the job. If they weren't in charge, the Glazers would be getting shit, more shit than a horse manure hut dump. It would be a pile on. Well, Ineos need to get the pressure. They are in control. They know what's going on behind the scenes. They know the reasons. I don't, you don't. And it's time to get behind this manager or make the change. And if you're going to make the change, then you need to follow through on your own principles that you're going to set the standard of football at Manchester United. And that standard of football is meant to be one that befits this football club. Now, what are you going to do? We are conceding too many shots. Are you going to go and get a defensive coach that suits these players? Or are you going to get rid of these players to play a brand of football we all want to see? And we can sack and we can listen to these twats who are going to be spending the next few days piling on to the manager again, blaming it on the manager again. Or we can actually look at what the vision of this football club is and start making decisions around the vision of the football club. Like I said, you've got to play to chips and it's been there for 10 years. Stop changing the chicken, the beef, the pork, the vegetables, the salad and change the fucking chips. It's obvious. It's absolutely obvious. And I'm at a point now after last night's game where I'm baffled, confused and absolutely deflated, but 100%, if I'm in charge of that football club, the solution is bloody stim. It's so simple. It's staring us in the face. The obsession about the amounts of shots, the obsession about the midfield, the obsession about the style of play. There is one defining, consistent issue at that football club, and it's the chips, i.e. it's the players. They are not capable of playing like Liverpool. I mean, look, I don't know what you think about this, but it is so frustrating to see Manchester United fans, real Manchester United fans, completely going off on the wrong thing. Completely not understanding what the problem is at Manchester United. Right. I've seen so many people this morning go, Brentford had, had their whole back four out and they still turned up. You can blame the players, but it's on the manager. Brentford had players out and they can still play a brand of football. Yeah, Brentford's brand of football is 30% possession and counter. If you want to do that, we can do that against Chelsea and we'll play well. But we do that and nobody likes it. So don't compare Brentford's style of football to Manchester United for one. But for two, you, can't, you contradict yourself. Why can't Ten Hag get a tune out of these players, but Thomas Frank can get a tune out of Brentford and Ange can get a tune out of Spurs? Well, here's, here's, here's a really novel idea for you because that's Brentford and that's Tottenham and we're Manchester United. And it's unacceptable for Manchester United to play park the bus football and counter-attack, which is what we are as a squad. We have an identity that doesn't match what's in the cupboard. You go into your cupboard today and you say, I'm a man who likes to wear a pair of jeans, a t-shirt, an overshirt and a pair of white trainers. 
and that's my look today. And you go into the dressing room, you've got none of those items, you've got a clown outfit and a dress. And that's what you've got to go with. So you've got an identity of how you want to look, but you don't have the clothes to do it. We as a fan, forget the manager, forget the players. We as a fan base have an identity. We might not like each other. We might disagree a lot. But we as a fan base at Manchester United, we ain't fucking Brentford and we ain't Spurs. So I don't care how Spurs or Brentford play because they aren't us. We have an identity. It's called the United Way. There are very many deviations and determinations about what the United Way is. What I think it is compared to you is probably very diff different. In the modern game, I would say the United Way has to be two centre-backs, a compact midfield, high up the pitch, the ability to retain the ball, but also the ability to move the ball quickly, take risks, get people in the box and create chances. I've done that in two sentences. That's the United way for me. That's the identity that will make me happy. Goals, creativity, confidence, aura. We haven't got the players to do that. I don't care whether the manager is Zidane or whether it is Ten Hag or whether it's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We do not have the players to play this mythical, well, Brentford can play well against us, so why can't we? Look at that team last night. You've got Maguire and Lindelof at centre-back. We're back to the Oli days. You've got McTominay in the midfield. That's back to the Mourinho days. You've got Bruno at 10. Oli days. You've got Rashford on the wing. Mourinho days. You've got... Who was on the right wing for his... You've got Ganacho who's a kid. You've got Maynou, who's a kid. You've got Rasmus, who's a young striker. So those three, no problem with them. Wan-Bissaka. Oli days. Um, Delo. I mean, Delo's having a good season, but he's not a, he's not a Ten Hag signing. And they got Anana, who is. The, the, the main bulk of that team aren't actually anything to do with the last 18 months. They've been here ages. Ten Hag is using Mourinho and Oli players, as per usual. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. There will be clubs out there that do that. There will be, there'll be successful teams that have got players from previous managers. It's problematic, but it doesn't have to sink you. But the reason it sinks us is because these players that I've just mentioned there, Marine, um, not Mourinho, Maguire and Lindelof and Wambasaka want to play on the edge of the box. They're deep line defensive players and they're certainly not possession based players either. So three of our back four last night can't play where we want to play and can't play on the ball. So that's a double negative. McTominay's a waste of space. Rashford wants to play on the counter attack and run into space. And Bruno is basically a Hollywood ball player. He's not a possession-based player. So you get people who go, I'm so angry. I'm so angry. And you've got every right to be angry. But Ineos need to look at this and understand that, yeah, sack the manager if you want to. Don't give a shit at this stage. Do what you want to do. I can't control it. But at what point do you do what surely all of us agree with is that you don't just change the manager. Don't just change the manager. Because they'll be playing Mourinho and Oli players again. If De Zerbi came in as our manager, next season he's going to be using Rashford, Bruno, McTominay, maybe Lindelof, wan -Bissaka. You know, it will not work. It will not work. We cannot keep doing this. And you know why we do it as well? And th this is my marker here. And we have to start... Well, I, I'm going to do it. I think we have to start doing this. We have to start questioning the owners of this football club and the people who are running the football side of things. Because for 10 years, I've known and you've known that we need to clear the deadwood. You know, we've said it so many times. And the deadwood is not Donny van der Beek. It's not Anthony Martial and it's not Christian Eriksen. The Deadwood is in the first team. For some clubs, it's on the bench, but the Deadwood's in the first team. I watched Brentford yesterday. I cannot believe how much they were up for it. And you can talk about tactics all you like. You can talk about formations. You can talk about selections and you may not be wrong. But where you, where you have to acknowledge is there is a minimum expected of a Manchester United player, regardless of tactics. 
and regardless of selections. And I do not suggest that anybody watches that Brentford game again. But it was so obvious that their energy, speed and tenacity was double that of most of our players. That's not tactics. That That's on the individual. And it doesn't matter who you put in charge. We already know there are certain players that infect the whole team that you can't trust. I mean, we've got players on the pitch last night that played in that Everton game where Ollie said some of these players won't play for the club again. Some of them didn't, but some of them are still here. And this has been going on for ages. Like, we played badly last night, but also some of those players were abysmal. Absolutely abysmal on the very basics of playing football. But also effort. I mean, don't tell me that these players can't play a five-yard pass. Well, last night they couldn't. It, it was unbelievable how sloppy and lazy and lack of interest there was from United players. And if I was watching that and I was in Ineos... I'd have a big list of players that I'm getting rid of. Massive list. But this is where I have a fear. I have a fear this morning. I fear that the uh, that Ineos and Sir Jim may well be a wolf in sheep's clothing. And what I mean by that is, I think this might be a pantomime and not an opera. I think this might be fake news. And what I mean by that is, I've watched Man United for the last 10 years. I've seen many of you say we shouldn't sack Jose, we should be getting rid of players first. We shouldn't sack Van Hal, we should be getting rid of players first. We shouldn't sack Oli, we should be getting rid of players first. Ranić's been thrown under the bus by these players, why is he losing his job? I've seen it. I've not agreed with it, but I've seen it. And I do agree with it now. Because what we've done consistently under the Glazers is we've ignored the problem and taken the cheaper option. And the cheaper option is to sack a manager for 10 million and replace him for 10 million than it is to try and sell players where you're going to make a massive loss running into over 100 million quid. Look, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but selling Bruno, Rashford, McTominay, Maguire, Lindelof won't be easy. It's far easier to sack a manager for 10 million and hope that he can get the best out of those players. And we've been doing that for 10 years. Look, some of those players aren't here anymore. You know, you could say Martial, Pogba. There's been other players that have survived managers in the hope that the next manager can come in and do well. And we need to stop doing this. And I'm watching this summer now and I'm like, if Ineos start this next season with a new manager or Ten Hag and some of these players are still here, then they're nothing. They're, they're no different. That they're just Glazer facilitators. If they're genuine, if they genuinely are about, we want to set a standard of football at this football club. We want to set a standard of professionalism at this football club. We want to play a brand of football that can challenge the likes of Man City's and Liverpool. And we want an elite sporting mentality. I'm sorry. You look at that team last night. Rashford, McTominay, Bruno, all have to be at least contemplated to be sold this summer because none of them none of them none of those three players show an ability to play anything like Man City or Liverpool consistently with an elite mentality at the moment they don't and for all of the season and yet I was told two weeks ago none of those players are for sale so what are Ineos if those three players who played shockingly badly last night and have done for weeks and don't fit a style of football that we apparently want to play. How can they not be for sale? And how can a manager that comes in be successful if we are already keeping players that do not fit the way we apparently want to play? And this is what I'm trying to say. We can moan about the players. We can moan about the manager. And you're absolutely correct. But the only people who have the evidence that we don't have is Ineos. And they've told us they are going to create a footballing team that plays good football with elite mentality. Well, we'll find out in the summer because if they're serious about that, it's very obvious who needs to get sold and I don't think they're going to do it. So it's over to them on that one because I don't actually think they're going to do it. Um, honestly, really don't. I think they're going to go with the cheap option again. I think that they probably will change the manager and we will stick with the same players. And look, there is a bounce there. Again, if you do your research, right, 
I'll guarantee, I can tell you the story. I can tell you the story, right? Sack Ten Hag, bring in Southgate. Sack Ten Hag, bring in De Zerbi. Sack Ten Hag, bring in Potter. Sack Ten Hag, bring in Zidane. I'll tell you what will happen. We won't get the clear out because as soon as the new manager comes in, the usual suspects who've been letting us down for years will suddenly start trying again and they'll have a good season. And we'll have a good season. So new manager comes in. No, not really a clear out because a new manager will not get rid of players they haven't worked with yet. So everyone will get a second chance. The same as they did under Ten Hag. The same as they did under Mourinho. The same as they did under Oli. The same players will get the same chance again. We won't have a clear out. Everything will be brilliant for the first season. Oh, yeah, we're back. Man United are back. We will qualify for the Champions League because Van Gaal did in season one. Mourinho did in season one. Oli did in season one. And Ten Hag did in season one. So all the failures all qualified for the Champions League in season one. Everybody had a good season one. And all those players will be back. Oh, oh, you know, you know the names. They'll be brilliant. And then the second season, it all goes shit again. And then there'll be people like me who sit there and say, I told you so. Because we've done the same thing again. It's the cycle of Manchester United. Players down tools. Manager gets blamed. Manager gets sacked. New manager comes in. No clear out. Bit of money spent. Players survive. Players start playing again. Good first season. Second season. Inconsistency comes back. Manager gets gradually blamed. Manager gets sacked. And that's what will happen. So if we change the manager in the summer, we will qualify for the Champions League next year. 100%. Because these players know how to turn it on for a year. And then they'll lose interest. And I shouldn't have to say this. You shouldn't have to acknowledge it. Ineos know it. So I'm sat here this morning very frustrated very angry. And I'm sat here going, well, look, I've, I've, I've called for managers to be sacked. I've done it numerous times. I didn't want to do it, but I did it. I've asked for players to be sold every fucking year for 10 years and it never, never happens. Am I going to wake up this morning and go sell this player, sell this player or sack this manager and bring this manager in? No, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the source. I don't actually know what's going on in the dressing room. I don't actually know why players aren't playing well. I don't actually know why Ten Hag is making silly decisions on substitutions. I don't have the details. I don't. But what I do know is I have to follow the evidence. And what I do know is the people in charge of the football is Sir Jim Radcliffe. And Sir Jim Radcliffe is apparently going to revolutionise Manchester United and make us play good football and win trophies. Well, here we go. You can't just have words at Man United. Ed Woodward told us all the time that this was a three-year cycle and we'd be back on, on top of football. Ten years later, we're worse than we've ever been. So I'm now looking at Ineos and I'm going, it's time to act quickly and make a decision on what you're going to do with this football club. Because if you want to change the manager, change the manager. But if you're going to change the manager, we won't have a clear out. And if we don't have a clear out, you're going to be back here in 18 months in loads of shit. So what are you going to do? Because actually, it matters not who the manager is. You should be intelligent enough to watch football and know, regardless of who your manager is, you're selling players. I want someone like Barada or Dan Ashworth to not really be bothered what the manager thinks and say, this player's got to go, this player's got to go, this player's got to go. If I'm the CEO of Manchester United or I'm the director of football of Manchester United, I don't need to ask Ten Hag who's getting sold this summer. I already know. I already know. I'm, I already know. I'm like... You're for sale, you're for sale, you're for sale, you're for sale. You've had your chance, fuck off. You're not going to play the brand of football I want to play. We've got a set of players that suit Brentford and Everton. I want players that can play like Arsenal and Liverpool. And we have a set of players that cannot, cannot play against a low block. They, they cannot deal with a low block. And we should have lost 3 or 4-0 last night. We cannot play against the low block. We, we just can't do it. We've not been able to do it for years. Years and years and years. It's not a new thing. We can't play against the low block. If you're any team in the bottom half of the Premier League and you've got Man United to play, just play a low block and counter. We can't deal with it. We haven't got the players. The amount of times yesterday I saw Bruno Fernandes turn and try and hit. You know, he, he, he should be Tom Cruise. I'm going to start calling him Tom Cruise. Be not because he's Hollywood, because it's Mission Impossible. He gets the ball and he tries and hits a ball behind a deep line to a running Rashford or Rasmus. 
and it never can make it and it never does. And you think, wow, that is what we're trying to do because that's the sort of players we've got looking for that Hollywood ball over the top. And of course, look, I'm not, I'm not, there is a section here where I want to, I want to talk about, um, I want to talk about Ten Hag, obviously. Um, a lot of people are talking about the, the, the press of the team. Um, and a lot of people are saying, why is it countless times yesterday you had the front six press, but the back four didn't? Why are the fullbacks not part of the press? It's a very good, it's a very good observation. It's a very obvious observation if you watch football, but it's a very good observation. Um, and the problem is we can't press. Rasmus is quite good at it, but everyone else is shit. Like, we're really bad. Like, Rashford's always been rubbish at pressing. People confuse when he sprints with being able to press. He sprints in a straight line. If I, I can pass the ball past Rashford, easy. Straight line sprint, as long as I've got an angled pass, think it over the top, easy. Pressing is about cutting passing lanes. McTominay's too slow for it. I don't think Bruno does it that well. Uh, Rasmus is good. Ganacho's okay. So straight away, your front six, half of it's not very good at pressing. Um, and that's why we get played through. Why are the fullbacks not part of that press is a really good question because it's another two bodies and they pass through to the wing a lot where our fullbacks were stood back. Um, honestly, only Ten Hag can answer that question. I would say the major reason is if those fullbacks join the press, the long ball into the channels is on. And Tony, over 10 yards, is going to beat Lindelof. And then he's in. So, and we saw it. We actually saw a chance for Tony in the first half where he's down the right channel, cuts inside and shoots. I, I think that, look, we're all geniuses in hindsight and we all talk about the tactical deficiencies, but there is a solution. There is a reason. It might not be the answer you want, but I think the reason that wan and Delo don't join the press is because... They leave a gap in the channel for a quick striker to run into. And in the second half, you've got Maguire and Lindelof, who are slow. So I think for me, I've been saying it for a long time. Our fullbacks will not properly join the press until we have Varane and Martinez at centre-back because we're exposed in the flanks. But then the front six press, they can't press and you get passed through. It really is, unfortunately... <laughs> It's a, it's a player issue. It is a player issue. And, and not in relation to the individual. It's about what's available. I mean, honestly, I don't like to not have a solution. I've got some comments to go through here. I don't like to not have a solution. I understand why the fullbacks stay back. Because our, our defenders are donkey slow. But then it makes the press ineffective and we get broken upon. If I'm being honest, the best way for Man United to play, and we'll get absolutely pelters if we do it to Old Trafford, is park the fucking bus. It really is. Like, you know what? If I was Ten Hag, I'd just park the bus now. It's the only way these players can play. Like, Varane's injured. Lindelof's injured. You know, the injury crisis is ridiculous. It's probably going to be Martinez and Maguire against Chelsea. It will still be wan at left back. Um... Hopefully we can play Casemiro and Mainu, which will make a big difference instead of McTominay. It's still going to be Rashford, Hoyland and Ganacho. I, I think that the best thing we can do for the last few weeks is park the bus. Um, Cal says we just accept we park the bus. Well, we don't, mate. Like that, that, that. I mean, that's what I mean. Like you're angry, you're frustrated, but you're not watching. We're not. We didn't park the bus against Brentford. Absolutely not. We didn't park the bus against Fulham. I think we'd been be we'd have been better off if we did. Because I think it's the only system that works for this team. We get we get hurt because we don't park the bus. We try and do something that the players can't do. The reason we concede so many chances is because we're so open at the back. Because we try and press high up the pitch, but we haven't got the players to do it. And then we get broken upon. We're the opposite of parking the bus at the moment. I actually hate parking the bus. But I think for the next few weeks, we may as well fucking do it. Because I think what Ten Hag is trying to do is display to Ineos his intention to play a brand of football that they want. The problem is, he hasn't got the players to do it, so it gets exposed so obviously. I think if he if he did put Oli in charge for the next few weeks, the results would improve. But that, and that's the dangerous thing for me. I, I said it at the start of the video. The dangerous thing for me is, we can instantly play good football. Well, 
we can instantly play. We can instantly... We could instantly start getting better results and concede less shots if we brought Oli back or Southgate or Mourinho in because the players are there for them to play. They would play a back four with two in front, wingers who attack quickly, Bruno who hits long balls, and it would work. It'd be fucking boring, but it would work. Because if you're going to sack Ten Hag, please employ Thomas Frank. I don't want Thomas Frank anywhere near Manchester United, but the, he is the manager. I've said it before and I got clipped, and it's true. There's only one manager that suits this squad at the moment in the Premier League, and his name is Thomas Frank. Go and buy Ivan Tony, bring Thomas Frank in, and we will finish sixth again next year. But we won't concede as many goals. We will counter-attack against anyone who lets us, and we will defend on the edge of our box. This squad suits Brentford. Do you want to play like Brentford? Get Thomas Frank, because this, play, these, this team suits it. We are, amazingly, a club that has spent over a billion pounds in the last decade and assembled a, a glorified version of Brentford. We've got edge-of-the-box defenders, defensive fullbacks, a midfield that basically can't keep hold of the ball, and an attack that thrives on counter-attack. We are 100% one of the worst footballing sides in the Premier League. And we are 100% one of the worst footballing sides in the Premier League because we pay people hundreds of thousands of pounds who should be playing for Everton. They are counter-attacking players who do not belong anywhere near the top six. And that is why we're not in the top, sorry, top five. We're not in the top five because we don't deserve to be in there. Um, the football is atrocious. Uh, we know the players are crap. Now Ten Hag might also be crap, says Ruben. But why should why, why would we change what might be crap instead of what we know to be crap? It's confusing, says Ruben. Exactly. Um, there's a lot of people out there that are confusing the fact that the players are crap and the manager's crap and they want to change the manager. And yet, as I said, the plate of chips has been there for 10 years. Do you want us to back the manager who loves Rashford, says Ryan. I'm going to talk about this now. Rashford, for me, is the reason for all our problems. It starts from one person, one press. He shows no effort week in, week out. I mean, look, Jason, I don't want to make it about Rashford. It's boring. Um, you know, he's had his response where he's offended by people saying that he doesn't put a shift in. Um, I said it last night. I don't need to repeat it. I think his effort levels are abysmal. And if he's trying, then, fuck God, he needs to retire. Like, he can be offended all he likes about people saying he doesn't put, put a shift in. But <laughs> he's... All, he, I'm sorry, I've seen Rashford at United for years. He ain't putting a shift in. He's just not doing it. Like, he can be offended all he likes, but he's not. Uh, if Ten Hag were to get the sack, thoughts on Xavi as replacement, genius of the game? Ronnie, I, I, I don't mind. I, I, honestly, if I, if Ten Hag got sacked tomorrow, I, I wouldn't be screaming and crying. I'd just be like, okay, now we've done it again. I, and it wouldn't matter who the next manager is. Give it to Thomas Frank, give it to Southgate, give it to Xavi, give it to Deserby. I really don't care because nothing will change. Nothing will change. I'm I, I, I'm actually surprised that we have fans of this football club who watch us play who think a manager's going to change anything. That, that There are genuinely people out there who think it can't get any worse. And I'm like, have you been watching us for the last 10 years? I I don't I don't see like have you watched Brighton play? Have you watched Barcelona play? How is Xavi or De Zerbi gonna get Rashford, Bruno, McTominay to play like Brighton, Barcelona, or Lindelof or Maguire or Wan Bissaka? It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It just seems you go and get a bricklayer out round to build you a house and don't buy him any bricks. Instead of buying him bricks, buy him ice cubes and try and get him to build a house in Mallorca. It'll melt. It won't work. So, you know, you can bring the best bricklayer in in the world. If you don't give him bricks and you give him ice cubes, it's going to melt. And I don't, I, I genuinely, I don't really care anymore what happens with the manager. Ineos might sack him, they might keep him. But what they need to understand is... I'm, I and many other United fans are way past a shiny new manager. It won't work. And the new and, and every manager is egotistical. So De Zerbi would walk in and go, hey, everybody, the De Zerbi show's here. That last manager's a dickhead. Everybody like me. I'm going to get you to play really good football now. And it will work for a year. 
and then it will all fall apart. And it amazes me that we still have fans that are easily pleased with a short-term fix. You know, a bandage on an open wound. Like We need surgery. As Ranyik says, we need open heart surgery. What Ranyik said nearly two years ago still stands today. We need open heart surgery and we keep putting a plaster on it. A new manager is just a plaster. It's not open heart surgery. The only time I'm going to get excited is when I see United clear out six or seven players that need to fucking go. And I'll tell you what, I'll be even more excited if they do it with a couple of big names because... At this point, I wouldn't be sad. I'd just be like, all I care about is Manchester United. I couldn't give a toss about Player FC. I couldn't give a toss about managers. What I want to see is Manchester United put first. I want to see Manchester United styles of football with elite professionalism and consistency. And I don't care what the collateral is anymore. If it's Luke Shaw, if it's Ganacho, you know, I'm, I'm naming players I like here. It, it doesn't matter who goes to me and it doesn't matter who the manager is. I'm tired of the quick fix. I'm tired of the hypocritical moaning. I'm tired of the abuse. I'm tired of the toxicity. The reality is every single Manchester United fan should be sat here going, over to you, Ineos. Do your fucking job. Don't care about what you do with the manager. Don't care what you do about the players. Your vision is to get us playing good football. Do your fucking job. Because if you're just going to replace the manager and stick with the majority of these players, you're just the Glazers. What I want to see is big changes. Big decisions. And if we don't get see it, they're just a shareholder to prop up the Glazers. Like, it's so obvious. And somebody said, what would you do this summer? Honestly, this week's big. If we lose to Chelsea and Liverpool, I'll have a different answer in a week's time. What I would like to see happen is I would like to stick with this manager for another year. But also, I'll be honest with you. Am I sticking with this manager? I'm getting him in my office and I'm saying to him, talk to me about Rashford, McTominay and Bruno. I'm not saying you've got to sell them, but just talk to me about those three players. What do you think about those three players and the next year at this football club? And based on what he said to me about that, he'd be sacked or backed. If he said to me, all three of those players are a massive part of my future plans, you're gone. Now, there's a bit of insight for you, isn't it? Because Goldbridge backs Ten Hag, he won't, he won't, you know, no, 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 no. Not anymore. Not anymore. I want to see a proper vision for this football club. And I am putting all of my eggs in the Ineos basket and saying, sort this fucking mess out. Because you have to now say, what is the vision for this football club? I want a new vision and I want a clear out. And I think the best way of achieving that is sticking with Ten Hag. Because a new manager won't do that. They'll come in and go, I'm going to give everyone a chance again and I'm bored of that. But there's no point in sticking with Ten Hag if his clear out is not the clear out we need. What if Eric Ten Hag says, yeah, I don't want to get rid of Maguire. I don't want to get rid of wan I don't want to get rid of Lindelof. I don't really want to get rid of McTominay. I don't want to get rid of Rashford. I don't want to get rid of Bruno. You know, if he wants to keep those, and I would keep some of them, but not all of them. If he wants to keep those six players, you're gone. Because I may as well go with a new manager because you're just keeping the same problems here. I don't, I don't, I don't, you're gone. So it's not as clear cut for me on Ten Hag anymore because it depends what he wants to do. Now, I want him to stay and clear it out and be given the players that will play as play better because I see... I see what Ten Hag's trying to do, even though it's chaotic. I can see what he's trying to do. He does want to play two centre backs. He does want his midfielders to be part of the, his fullbacks to be part of the press. He does want to be creative. It's just not got the players to do it. So I would like to give him the players to do it. But I have to say, last night there is something going on at that football club, and I've left it towards the end of the show on purpose. There is something going on at that football club that is it needs calling out, and that something is player power like what is what is going on at that football club that certain players stay on the pitch for 90 minutes when you've got options on the bench that could change the game and I don't understand still this morning why Bruno was still on the pitch why McTominay was still on the pitch I don't understand it I don't understand it at all you've got Maynou who had to go to the left wing you've got Ericsson who didn't even get on 
and they're both number 10s and we could have changed our number 10 who was playing abysmal that to me stinks of fear and player power and i don't know i don't know the truth because bruno fernandez is well liked around the club but is ten hag scared to take his captain off is he scared to take bruno fernandez off because if he is that's a big problem klopp's not scared to take off um salah pep's not scared to take off de bruyne whether it upsets them or not. So why is that happening? Um, obviously, people have said that about Rashford as well. Um, I just, I just, I'm confused by last night. I mean, and, and McTominay was absolutely invisible. Like you, you may as well have put Anana in the midfield and put Binder in goal and took McTominay off. I mean, that's just battling as well. Why is it that? Every single Manchester United manager we've had ends up with a weird niche of not good enough footballers that they will not sub. And I don't believe in coincidence. Mourinho did this. Oli did this. Ranić did this. And now Ten Hag is doing this. There's always one, two or three players that it's baffling why they're still on the pitch after 90 minutes. And they are. And I just don't get that. Because Mourinho is a strong character. Oli had nothing to lose, Ranić was on trial, and Ten Hag is a bit of a dictator. So why is it with every one of those managers, there's two or three players that it baffles you how they play? And I just think, is there, is there, is there involvement from higher up? Is it player power in the dressing room? Or is it something else? And we've spoken about this for years. I think we've even spoken about it with Van Hal. There's this weird thing at United that doesn't happen at the other clubs whereby certain players keep getting picked, don't get subbed, and yet they play badly. And it wouldn't happen at Liverpool, and it wouldn't happen at Man City, but it happens at Man United, and it's happened for years. I don't know whether it's contracts, I don't know whether it's player power in the dressing room, and I, or I don't know whether it's people from higher above. But something's weird there. Like, something's really weird there. And it reflects so badly on Ten Hag. It does. Like, you know, even I this morning was like, if they sack him, it won't surprise me. But there's, there's stuff going on that's not acceptable. Like, a manager needs to manage. And I don't think... Um, Robert McCormack says, I think he just believes they need to stay on. Well, Robert, that's, that's terrifying then, isn't it? Because, like, Bruno put him on the right wing then. Bring a new number 10 on. But keeping him at number 10, which is baffling. Klopp and Arteta got time, says Tommy. If they get rid of one big name, it might shake up the others to perform, says Stuart. Well, Stuart, on a very basic level, if you drop Bruno Fernandes against Chelsea and you start Mason Mount, it sends a message that might give everyone else a kick up the backside. So why not do it? Nobody should be bigger than the football club. Uh, Ray says, correct on Thomas Frank. We play counter-attacking football because these players can't play any different. And they can't, Ray. You're absolutely right. They can't. They can't. Like, it's not even offensive to say Bruno Fernandes, Scott McTominay, Marcus Rashford cannot play possession-based football. They can't do it. They don't have the ability to do it. It's like asking Harry Maguire to sprint as quick as Kyle Walker. He can't do it. He doesn't have that attribute. And these players don't have possession-based football attributes. We're a mid-table club. Ten Hag is overperforming, says Nim. Well, Keen, you're right. I think we should be where Chelsea is. It's more, more likely for the players to be inconsistent than the manager. Insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. We change the manager and keep the players and expect results to stay the same. It's that, it's that plate of chips analogy. You can keep putting a burger or a steak or a chicken breast or whatever with the chips. The chips are the problem, and we need to figure this out. We know the players are crap now. Ten Hag might have done that one from Ruben. Uh, Rashford, for me, is the reason. We've done that one from Jason. If Ten Hag were to get the sack, thoughts on Javi? Done that one from Ronnie. I think you have a lot of good but not great players. The big thing I watch is the lack of response to things going against them. Poor mentality. I mean, SR, we didn't deserve to lose last night. but Sorry, we didn't deserve to win last night, but how we didn't win from that Mount goal is disgusting. Um, and that's on the midfield again, by the way. In a line on the six-yard box, not looking for the cutback. How many goals have we conceded this season from cutbacks? How many goals have we conceded from cutbacks in the last five years? Our, mid our midfield can't mark. They don't know what they're doing. Eric Ten Hag pushed away Sancho, Philip Pellistri and Fernandez says Kiel. And? I don't really have a problem with any of those. Some of them needed to go on loan. Why can't both the manager and the players go, says Majek? Because it won't happen. 
I don't think it's ever happened at any football club and it won't happen. Not easy to clear. Financial fair play and players on contracts, they won't get us elsewhere. Patience, something the media had with Arteta, not with Eleven Hag. Clear the boards, says Epiphany. Uh, Eric Ten Hag out, but can't name another to come in. Clown fans, says Pizza. Fans need to realise that the players need to go out and perform on the pitch, but they don't. Um, and the fans look for a scapegoat, says Philip. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I, I read I read some of the headlines. Get rid of this fraud now. Sack Ten Hag, this, that and the other. And I'm like, it's amazing, isn't it? Because if we'd won with the Mount goal, those headlines wouldn't be there. It's amazing how we're at that stage already where one result changes a whole um, fan base. Um, in fact, look, Ten Hag in 60%, Ten Hag out 40% in the poll this morning. After the Liverpool game, it was 85% in and 15% out. So one game changes a massive swathe of our fan base. And when you look at the game, only two players came out of the game with any credit. Anana and Mainu. So the players don't turn up and fans turn on the manager. It's true. I'm, I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying. And, and, and you wonder, you, you wonder why I question what those players are doing on the pitch. Like, they're not thick. They've they've played the game. They know. I've seen Chelsea players do it 10 years ago. Stop playing for the manager. Manager gets sacked. They didn't play for the club last night. And, it, and also, I've said that before. Stop. Stop. I'm an idiot. Stop saying they're not playing for the manager. Because it's not not playing for the manager. It's not playing for the club. Some of those players didn't play for you last night. They didn't play for the badge. They didn't play for the club. They didn't. Forget the tactics. Why were Brentford quicker to every tackle? Why did Brentford win every tackle? Why did Brentford pass five yards better than us? Like three principles that you should expect no matter what the team. Energy, concentration and desire. And Brentford had it in bucket loads and we didn't. They didn't turn up. They didn't turn up last night. Um, look, conspiracy theory. Did Maguire, Rashford, Shaw come back from the England camp and go we'd like Gareth come on conspiracy I don't know something happened over the international break where they went from this massive energy high against Liverpool to let's not try against Brentford um is Eric Ten Hag football too specific as Keel we don't have the players to play it First donation, I listen to you here and on another podcast as well. Keep up the good content, says Nathan. Thank you very much, Nathan. It's a myth McTominay sprints in the last five games. I bet for my friend £5, at £5 each time he sprints. I've paid him £5 in five games. It's a myth. He's a workhorse. I think he's been crap for a long time, Common, actually. I don't really understand what McTominay's doing. If the plate of food is crap, I send back both the chips and the steak, says Rory C. Madrid, Bayern, Milan, Napoli, Chelsea all change managers more than United in the last six years and rebuilt as well. Your argument is defunct and your bias is evidence, says Radu. Um, I think I think your argument is redundant and I think your uh, argument is uh, defunct because Chelsea are in a right fucking state and uh, Madrid and Bayern live in a one-horse race and um, the Italian league is notoriously change your manager every year. So do your homework, Radu. And also, it still doesn't change the fact that we've changed the manager a lot in the last five years and we're still shit. So what I'm trying to say to you, Radu, and I don't know whether your brain can grasp it, is you're one of those people, and there's plenty of streams you can find out where you can get four or five people screaming and shouting about getting the manager out. You know, we cater for everybody in this fan base. But tell me simply... Why you call the players crap and you call the manager crap and you want to sack the manager? What happens to the crap players? And what happens to the new manager who can't get the crap players to play they want to, the way they want to play? Which is exactly what's happened to our last five managers. Every manager has come in and failed because the players can't play their brand of football because the owners won't clear the players out because it's too bloody expensive. Manchester United's failure can be summarised in one simple sentence. People are searching for why Man United aren't very good. Liverpool fans want to know. Arsenal fans want to know. Man United fans want to know. The media want to know. Why are Manchester United so shit? Why are Manchester United having to change the manager so regularly? Why won't anything work? Surely at some point we will find a manager that will work. No. The reason Man United fail is because the ownership 
basically go for the cheap option every time. They change the manager, which costs them 10, 20 million, and they keep the players. And they've been doing it for years. And the reason we fail is because we won't resolve the core issue. Our players aren't good enough. So we keep trying to find Harry Potter to come in and manage these players and make us like Man City and Liverpool. But we don't have the players that can play like Man City and Liverpool. The most obvious issue with Manchester United over the last decade is that we spent way too much money on shit players and we're now expecting managers to work miracles. So we can change the manager again, but until we change the players, nothing will change. And that is why I say, Ineos, over to you. Because are you the Glazers or are you genuine? Because if you're genuine, there's only one place you're going to change things first. And it's the players. I don't know whether we're going to see that. I really, really don't. Um, anyway, look, it's been a great show this morning. It's a big day in the Premier League. I'm doing a double watch along on that football. Uh, Liverpool against Brighton at two. And then the big one, Man City against Arsenal at half past four. We're back on here tonight. Um, I think it might be seven o'clock tonight. It might be eight o'clock. Remember, the clocks have gone forward, by the way. It's actually coming up for 11 o'clock in the UK. It might still be just coming up for 10 o'clock for you. So the clocks have gone forward if you're confused. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Great show. 60% uh, of you are Ten Hag in. 40% of you are Ten Hag out. Uh, I hope that across that show, you actually realised that there was no definitive answer in there. I wasn't in any way trying to make it a pro Ten Hag show or an anti-player show or a sack Ten Hag show. I just think we are looking for the solution in the wrong area. Everything now depends on Sir Jim Radcliffe and whether he's a fake or he's real. If he's real and he wants to play good football, then he needs to sell certain players. If he's fake, then we'll see the sacking of a manager and the same players given another chance and we'll qualify for the Champions League next year. And then the year after that, it will all go to shit. That's where the focus is. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Jerry says it all changed when we won the League Club. Players thought they were greatest. Stop playing his style. These players have to go. Keep a Ten Hag, says Jerry. And Sam says, I was scared when Ten Hag said in his pre-match interview to win today. It's going to be about passion. Seems like he just doesn't have a plan. Uh, there we go. Great comments. A wide variety. All of it covered. And can I just shout out John Stewart, who gifted five memberships as well. Absolute legend, John. Uh, I'll be on that football later. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, yeah, get your comments in if you're not watching live. There's so much to discuss. Take care.